Good morning guys and gals. Uh, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to take a look at and, you know, do our studies and uh, reveries and whatnot. <laughs> so yeah, um, today I'm doing a master study. Uh, so yeah, I don't do often enough of these, uh, but they are very, very much fun to do and it's so important, especially, you know, to know what... Uh, what happened in the history of art, you know, and to study from the masters is always such a good practice to take a look back and, and see what's been done in the past before. It always amazes me too. Uh, such as the case of this one. This is Jean Jerome, uh, Jean Jerome's Police Verso. Um, that's the name of the artwork and I hope I'm not mispronouncing anything <laughs> in that particular sentence. I probably did. I apologize profusely if I did, but anyways, my point about Jean Leon Jerome uh, is that he surprised me. <laughs> just, just people in that art period of which uh, Jean Jerome lived in, uh, the those guys, those artists, the famous ones during that era, was just is just fascinating for me to study they're just very very good like if i was to go back in time right and if i have if i have to choose my favorite art period to be in it would have to be around the 1800s when the french academic painting was starting and its counterpart impressionism was happening um there's such two radically different practices both of which i am in love with um they're both good in their own way um but yeah uh the french academic painting uh or jean leon jerome belongs to the french academic painters of that time uh, around 1850 1870 uh somewhere around that timeline uh, but the guy is good. Um, and I guess real quick, I want to talk about why it is that I love uh, the French academic period. The reason why I love the French academic period is because it's basically the what I would consider the epitome of the Renaissance. I mean, basically what happened in, in my point of view and in, in my brain the way i understand art history right first everything started with the renaissance and the renaissance is very very special it is a very profound time in the art period because that's when things radically change that's when things started looking really more photorealistic that's when a lot of renaissance painters started being more analytical with the artwork uh, and started being more scientific in their approaches to painting uh, and there's a lot of innovations that happen too, uh, like the invention of oil painting, or I think oil came around, was invented pretty much right around that time, uh, versus before they were using egg tempera or tempera, which kind of ruined artwork after a few years. Um, during the Renaissance period, oil was invented or um, that lasted longer. And it has different properties in tempera. Um, and yeah, like just so many innovations during the Renaissance period. Anyways, when it comes to painting and like the study of painting, you know, there was a lot of hits and misses um, during the Renaissance period. And it continued to do so until I would have to say the Dutch Golden Era. There's another era that I like that I don't know much about that I would very, very much to love, very much love to study. But the Duchess Golden Era is also awesome, like the way the painters work and whatnot. And then obviously, you know, time went on, yada, yada, all this art movements came and went and blah, blah, blah. And then the French academic painters um, came in. So, <laughs> no, that was like a very concatenated version of art history. <laughs> My whole point in going through all that is basically a lot of things happen from the Renaissance all the way to the French academic period. And by the time the French academic era set in, 
a lot of the studio practices is pretty much ingrained into the artists. I mean, that's when things really started get, to look really good, in my opinion. Um, things were photorealistic before, uh, as in the case of the Mona Lisa, which was painted in during the Renaissance era. I mean, that looked like a photorealistic painting, but then there were some other paintings that was just kind of like so-and-so, right? Um, by the time the French academic period rolled around, you know, things were looking really, really good, such as the case of this one, this police verso painting. I was very much drawn to this painting because the very first time I saw it, I thought it was a photograph, right? And it looked so good, so lifelike, so realistic that I was just like, it's got to be a photo up until I clicked on it, enlarged it and realized, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a painting. And so that's what I meant about Jean Leon Jerome, which is very surprised, very surprising to me, you know, and his work's very surprising to me. It's just because I, I, it keeps happening to me. I would run into a painting that I thought was done recently with more modern technology with the help of cameras and photographs. Because bear in mind, during the French academic era, the camera had already been invented, but it was not in wide use. I mean, even artists didn't even use it in their art practice. They still went out and, you know, studied models and studied the environment. I mean, they were very much studio oriented in their practice, right? Um, the camera as an art tool didn't really start getting used very well until 1920s when Norman Rockwell was around. Um, and that's when I would have to say when the camera was being used effectively for artwork. And so to have a painting like this that looks like it was done by a camera, but the camera was never even used, that just stuns me, you know? I mean, I remember running into works by Chuck Close and I was thinking, wow, you know, those are photographs. Only for me to realize they weren't, you know? And yeah, Chuck Close is such a good photorealistic artist. You have to check him out. As well as Don Eddy and the 1960s photorealistic uh, painters. They're so good. <sighs> but yeah, um, so the French academic era always surprises me just because they're just so good with their practice. If we're talking about just pure, fine art skill, Hands down, I would have to pick the French academic paint painters as like the ninjas of pure art skill. They're just that good. <laughs> so yeah, um, which is kind of interesting because during around that time, the Impressionists has started happening too. And they're a totally, completely different beast and practicing a totally, completely different art genre. Uh, and very much <laughs> opposed to the French academic uh, practice too, you know. So to have those two artistic genres happening at the same time, oh man, that that era has just got to be so exciting. Like seriously, take me back to 1850, 1860, right smack in the middle of France, because. Dude, I would love to meet all these guys. Like William Adolphe Bouguereau, still in love with him, man. That guy rocks. And Jean Leon Jerome. Man, to study under these guys. And the Orientalist painters, um, which I've... Uh, oh, man, who was that artist? Oh, no, this is going to drive me insane. There's this other French academic painter that I'm, like, so crazy for. And of course, you know, having to meet Claude Monet and Monet and of course Van Gogh, man, to hang out with all those guys would just be so awesome. So yeah, wow, 10 minutes of me just going on about the French academic era and how that has got to be my favorite art period ever. So anyways, now that I've stated why I believe um, that era is very, very important. Let's go on with what's going on with this study and why, uh, what my specific goal is for this particular study. So, as I briefly mentioned, um, when I first encountered the painting, I thought it was a photograph. I mean, that's how stunned I was to realize that this painting was done right in, like, I don't know, 1870, 18. I'm not going to look it up because I know I'm going to get distracted if I start looking this up. 
but some sometime in the late 1800s was when this painting was done um without the use of camera i'm assuming anyways um but um so yeah when i first ran into the painting i thought it was a photograph and so when i learned it was a painting i was like man i gotta you know keep this under <laughs> keep this in my list of artwork to be inspired by because it's just so good right um but um after running into the painting you know at some point i decided that i got to do a study on it just because it's that good of a painting and so when i picked it up for a particular study i know that i wasn't gonna fully try to recreate it uh as is most of my studies i try to do it like a like quick studies i don't really spend like hours at a time on a particular study i just do like a few hours uh at a time and so when i set out to do this specific study um what i really had in mind was just color matching i was going to use this as a color matching exercise because i know that i'm very weak in my color game right and so when I set out to do this, everything I basically had intended to do was that I was going to, you know, try to match the colors as closely as possible and really, really observe it instead of just picking something that was just very close to the hue. Because I'm notorious for that, you know, I don't even really consider um, value differences or saturation dif differences. I just try to match it close to the hue. Um, saturation and value very much impacts the color that you end up with, you know. And so I was very much conscious of those three factors when I was doing my color matching. Because again, like I said, that was my whole point of doing this exercise. So um, now that I've stated like what my goal is for this, I guess we could go on about what was going on. Um, and what had transpired in the past 12 minutes. So what had transpired in the past 12 minutes is obviously I started out with a not so blank canvas. Typically when you do your study, it is very much encouraged for you to start a blank canvas, right? Uh, I didn't, I took the original painting, blurred it out to the point where, you know, nothing is very indistinguishable, right? Just to kind of get uh, an overall color tone and just to start with something. Starting with something is always better than just starting out blank. Um, as soon as I have that, I started blocking out shapes where the general area is. Again, I was really considering uh, my colors. I was very, very much in tune to trying to match um, the colors as closely as possible as I can, uh, which is really hard because there's a lot of colors going on. A good example, of how many colors are going on is if you look at the stone on the wall at the very bottom where it meets the ground if you look at that particular stone there's a lot of colors there there's some greens there's some reds there's some dark blacks and of course there's some yellows for that highlight and then if you look at mine you know you just see <laughs> gray <laughs> which is kind of funny because i just now noticed this um but yeah, I mean, if I had developed this artwork some more and if I had continued to study some more, I would have probably been able to, you know, get down to the nitty gritty of adding those extra colors. But since I was kind of pressed for time, well, not really pressed for time, but I, I intended for this to be just one of my quicker studies, um, I didn't bother as much with it as much as, you know, trying to achieve the overall look and trying to match the overall color which is really what i was trying to do um to get as close to that gray as possible because the overall color of that stone is gray even though it has like tons of colors in there and so yeah that was basically again like my goal um i blocked out shapes using generic colors at first and then slowly adding some more colors which is what i did on that other wall um I'm going to refine this some more as you can tell um, the color isn't exactly quite right uh, the color is supposed to be red but I'm looking at it and I realize there's a lot more purple on there than needed to be um, 
but this was just initial blocking anyway so I just initially blocked things out after I have things blocked out I did a quick line sketch to kind of help me reorient where everything is and to make sure that I have everything lined up correctly that's why I pulled up um, that second photo so I could refer to I, I could use the two photos the reference photos that I stuck on my canvas right I could help myself or I could help guide my painting and guide my line work by looking at the one on the left and the one on the right and just average averaging things out where things are so that's why I had two references instead of just one so that I for the things that are in the vertical I could look at you know the one on the bottom so if I'm trying to figure out for example where those orange posts are on exactly in my painting where they needed to be then I would refer to the one at the bottom but if I needed to figure out um, where the bodies are horizontally right then I would have to look at the one on the left uh, the dead bodies anyways uh, that's what I was trying to talk about so if I was trying to you know again trying to orient where the orange posts are in terms of vertically I would look at the bottom if I was trying to figure out where to place my post uh, or in terms of where they are in the horizon line then yeah I would look at the left so that's why I had two references there but yeah I did the line work and then after I did the line work I'm continuously adding more color trying to average more colors out uh, and yeah after that I do this whole blending thing and then after the blending thing I rinse and repeat add more details add more line work add more um, refining my edges more just so that things and the shapes read clearer
So at this point, I'm working on the Gladiator. Um, after having worked uh, a little bit on the background, I am now working on the foreground, um, the focal point of the painting, which is this Gladiator right here. And of course, the main Gladiator is decked out in gold. And I gotta tell you, painting gold is very, very, very difficult. <laughs> It is one of the most interesting metals. Well, actually, any of the metals are actually very, very difficult to paint. Uh, even regular old metal is difficult to paint. But gold is very uh, one of the more interesting things to paint as well, just because of its difficulty. It's kind of hard to figure out exactly what the color, what the colors are um, in a gold helmet or in a gold metal. Because uh, there's a combination of yellows, oranges, and reds, and so its hue range is just very wide that it's kind of difficult exactly to ascertain um, how you could paint it. Because um, there's times where, you know, people would paint gold and it ends up looking too yellow. That's really predominantly the biggest mistake at, at times when you're painting yellow. Most people end up painting something to the effect of yellow or whatnot. Or in some cases, they paint something and it just ends up looking too orange. So, yeah, painting gold in general is just very, very hard to nail because it's a combination of yellows, oranges, and reds with some reds in it. Um, so, yeah. So, I really took the time to, of course, study the painting and match everything as close to as I could um, while doing this of course in a limited limited amount of time um, some aspects of it I did catch um, I really like the way the helmet is looking right now um, hues are off of sorts uh, in some parts they feel like well not so much as hue I guess but as value some of the values can be pushed a little bit darker than they needed to be, but it's not. Um, but it's okay, because overall, the impression is still there. Um, so yeah. So now that I've knocked out the gold, um, which is what I would argue to be one of the most difficult parts of the painting, uh, just trying to color match it as much as possible. Um, now that I'm done with it, uh, the rest of the painting just 
pretty much kind of fell into place, you know. I mean, I have something to refer to, so uh, referring to it um, or trying to paint the shapes and making it look like something um, was fairly easy to do simply just because, well, hey, I have a reference, so yeah. But if I zoom out, uh, looking at it from afar, everything's looking nice and tight. Um, of course, it could be refined some more, but I, oh, again, like I mentioned, I had an intention of this to be just a quick study. Um, I think I mentioned at the very beginning of the video that it was like a five hour study of some sort, uh, done in a span of a few days, um, really a few months, because I started to study a long time ago. And then I stopped and then I picked it up again, uh, finally to finish it. Um, so yeah, but anyways, uh, I really love this painting. I really love this piece. And again, as I've mentioned, I really love the time period of which the time period that Jean Jerome lived in. I mean, it was just an awesome time period to be in because everything was, um, happening during that time, uh, in the art era. Again, like I said, the French classical period, uh, I feel like it's the epitome of the Renaissance. I mean, by the time the French academic period happened, there's been 300 years worth of art history um, and art lessons um, that the French academic painters can refer to, you know. So, yeah, um, by the time that they started doing their own works, their works are just, just, for lack of a better term, or for lack of a description, they were just really, really good, very, very photorealistic, um, especially without the use of cameras, you know, so, uh, yeah, uh, 300 years worth of Renaissance uh, studio practice culminated into the French academic period, which, again, like I mentioned, the Impressionists promptly rejected. <laughs> So, but I love the Impressionists too because they're, again, as I had mentioned, a completely different beast. So, yeah. But, anyways, yeah, that period is just so fascinating. I can't get over it. Um, I was reading a little bit more about Jean Jerome just now, and um, to know his impact in art history uh, and to learn more about it, it's just, it's outstanding. Um, the guy had major influences throughout the ages. Um, turns out that even Mary Cassatt, uh, one of the post-impressionist painters, actually studied under him too. Uh, and all this great artist, um, turns out was very much influenced by him uh, because he was his, he was their teacher. So yeah. But here it is. I'm almost done with this study. I know I didn't want to develop it any farther than this. Um, the main focal area, the gladiator, is now in focus. And it's looking good. Again, the hues doesn't match cor correctly per se. But at least range-wise, it's almost there. And value-wise, it's there. Things could be refined a little bit more. Um, as in the case of the wall, it's too purple instead of it being reddish orange where it really needed to be uh but yeah overall though it's it's pretty good and i totally forgot that i went back and did some more work on on the background because i pretty much thought that i was done with the background but lo and behold i'm wrong uh yeah Apparently, this painting was the one who popularized the idea of thumbs up and thumbs down. So, Mark Zuckerberg can thank John Leon Jerome for popularizing the idea of thumbs up and thumbs down. So, yeah, uh, police for so. This is one of the earlier paintings that kind of depicted people thumbing down something so in this case uh they're telling the gladiator to kill the contender so yeah thumbs down knock off his life take his head and whatnot man now that i'm looking at his painting on the left it's just it's so gorgeous i can't get over how gorgeous it is 
so well done, so nicely detailed, so photorealistic without the use of cameras. So yeah, if you're an artist who is wanting to do some studies and is wanting to explore some um, great masters from the past to study, uh, I would highly suggest John Leon Jerome, um, William Adolphe Bugaro, which is my favorite. Um, and man, I keep forgetting that one artist that I really love um that i've done studies on too uh but yeah i'll have to tell talk to you guys about that artist some other time this is the end of the painting thank you guys for watching this master study with me like and subscribe i'll catch you guys in the next video good night